Hi, I'm Warren Geller. At Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, we believe that all citizens need to be informed about the health care issues that affect their lives. That's why we're proud to support the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. The Gift of Sharing, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by TD Bank, Berkeley College, Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, NJM, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and more, with a focus on safety and financial stability, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. know that more than 120,000 people in the U.S. are waiting for a life-saving organ transplant and nearly 5,000 are living right here in New Jersey. New Jersey Sharing Network's mission is to save and enhance lives through organ and tissue donation. You can make a difference and save a life today. Mm, powerful stuff. Welcome to Caucus New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. As you just saw, Nearly 5,000 New Jersey residents are currently waiting for transplants. Joining us here in the studio today to talk about their personal experiences with organ and tissue donation, we have Dorothea Duffy, who is a kidney transplant recipient, a caucus veteran. She was back with us uh, last year, and at that time, she was uh, waiting for that transplant. And we are so thrilled, to happy, and uh, to have you with us, and you look fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. We also have Vito. Polito, who is chairman of the board of the New Jersey Sharing Network, our partner in this very important public awareness initiative. Luis Fernandez is a cornea transplant recipient and the family support coordinator at the New Jersey Sharing Network. And finally, a wonderful friend we have with us, a new friend, Patty Jackson, is a mother of a 13-month-old organ donor named Zoe. Zoe was run over in an accident several years ago. Yes, in Newark. And uh, donated her heart, her liver, and kidney when Zoe, Zoe was lost. And you made that decision to do that because? I just felt like it was the right thing to do. I mean, what purpose would it have served for me to just bury her with those organs when she could have saved somebody else's life? I mean, she, she helped three other mothers not have to go through what I'm going through right now, so. 13 months. 13 months. You have a, uh, I know Bob Morris, our great director, will get a shot of a beautiful button you have on, uh, of a beautiful picture of Zoe. You wear that? Every day. Every day. What did she bring to your life? Happiness. She brought the whole family closer together. She was just an amazing little girl. What did she bring to the other people that she donated her organs to, including a young boy by the name of Abel, who received Zoe's kidney, who was 13 at the time and now is? 17. We're going to show a picture, if we can. Jacqueline Heyer, our, our great producer, if you could. Now, tell us who we're looking at right there. That's Abel, <laughs> his mom, Carmen, my daughter, Parker, myself, and Mary Ellen from the Sharing Network. Are you family now? Of course. How's that happen? <laughs> You know what? We met in this past November that's at my house, and we've just been in contact constantly. We were together for his anniversary in April. We were together for his birthday. He came to the 5K this year. The big 5K we'll talk about. Go ahead. I just spoke to him yesterday. He was on vacation in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe um, continues to give life. Yes. Vito, is that why you do this? Yes, it is. Talk yes, it is. It. I mean, I, uh, my background is in totally finance. I got involved with... Uh, Sharing Network through Joe Roth, the CEO, yep. at an Audi one day, and we just started talking. And coming from first generation Italian, very lack of knowledge regarding organ donation, transplant, uh, asking, talking to Joe the whole day. At the end of the day, he asked, you know, what about uh, joining the board? And I said, I don't know if I can do it. You know, I'm not, I don't know if I really have the, the knowledge base. I thought it had to be all medically, medically driven, and I joined. And six years later, uh, 
I have become, I believe, a champion of this process. I really think it's the right thing to do, and I honestly must admit that I did not check the box until I joined the network. I didn't know anything about checking the donor box. It's been a, uh, a rewarding experience to me to be part of the network. I mean, I walk into that building, and it's like a family that's come together. What does that mean? They all know each other. They all have the right direction, the vision, the mission of what they do every day means so important to them. It's a thing that they do, they the want to do. Describe Sorry? that mission. Mission is uh, to save and enhance lives through organ and tissue donations. I mean, you have to say it slowly to really let it sink in and digest. It's powerful. There are 5,000 people waiting. 5,000 people in New Jersey waiting for uh, organs. And when we partnered with the Sharing Network, it was very simple, and I'll be very clear. Our objective was not only to increase public awareness, but to encourage people to do what they need to do if they choose to, to donate, to try to reduce the number of people on that list. And one of the people I want to talk about is Dorothy, Dorothea Duffy. Now, you're a kidney transplant recipient. You got the kidney when? January 27th of this year. January 27th on 2014. You were with us on this set of Caucus, New Jersey. Do you know when? September of 2013. September 2013. At the time, as part of this ongoing initiative of public awareness called the gift of sharing, you talked about what it was like waiting. How long were you waiting? Uh, I was on dialysis. It would have been this April four years, so about three and a half years at that time when I spoke with you. Your life has changed just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, why, don't, why don't we take a look at Dorothea Duffy in Caucus, New Jersey, just a while back, and her life has changed an awful lot. This is Dorothy on public television. You have a very rare autoimmune disease that affects your vascular and respiratory system. Correct. On a transplant list for that period of time, a couple of years. Um, you're waiting for a kidney. Waiting for a kidney. I'm listed in two clinics, uh, one in Pennsylvania and Philly, and one at St. Barnabas. Now on dialysis. I'm on dialysis three days a week. What's and, that like? Um, kind of um, understand exactly what Denise said. You accept your life as it is for now, right. and you make the best of it. Um, it's something I know I have to do. And my main, one of my main goals is staying as healthy as I can, so I'm ready for that kidney when it comes available. Go ahead. So it finally came available. By the way, what was it like seeing that? Seeing that pic? Um, Do you recognize that lady? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I know who she is. And How much different do you feel today than then? Well, one thing I feel like I lived up to what I just said. I kept myself ready for that day when I finally got the correct call for that kidney, and it was offered to me. Um, I don't have to go to dialysis. I have, um, I actually, I, 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 my recovery seemed to move along pretty quickly now that I look back. When you're going through it, mm. it doesn't seem like it's fast enough. How's your quality of life today? It's very good. Can we show a picture of you from the uh, 5K? Sharing Network 5K, which sure. is a great fundraiser for the organization. Yeah. Uh, our, our great producer, Jackie Chikarico, was up there and did a great producing job of putting a package together. There, there you are, Team Dorothea. Mm -hmm. You had a team there? I had a team. What's up with that? <laughs> I do. That's my team. I have my shirts and my team. We wow. had a... Uh, how proud? 25 of us. How proud? Just the support and the love from my family and friends, yeah. just, it's overwhelming. So They're you're off that list. Great. I'm off the list. So that's the point, folks. We're not going to turn this into a PBS telethon <laughs> or a begathon or however you, or pledge or, you know, all those things are good because we love when you support public broadcasting. But I'll tell you what we are going to turn it into, a, an opportunity for you to find out more about how you can become someone who gives the gift of life. And that's why the Sharing Network information is on the screen. You're off the list. Too many people are still on the list. That's right. You were on the list, waiting for a, a cornea transplant. 
a cornea transplant in your in my left eye. What was going on? What could you <clears throat> see and not see? Well, um, yeah, I I uh, remember when I was 17 trying to get my license. Everybody has to take the eye exam, and you know I I took it, and I did not realize that. You know, I had missed a whole column, and the guy said, well, you have to go to the eye doctor. I can't give you your, your driver's license. And that's when I found out that I had um, <clears throat> a, a disease in, in, in my cornea that was, you know, I, I wasn't able to see right. And um, from there on, you know, just went through the process. They usually give you a um, contact lens. But, you know, I'm a, I was aware that eventually I was going to need a, um, a cornea transplant. So one day, after about 10 years of being... Uh, diagnosed, I um, I couldn't see. You know, it was just uh, cloudy. It was white, and my doctor told me, we, "You need that cornea transplant." So, from there on, <clears throat> I got involved with the sharing network. You got involved. Yeah, um, I, I became a family support coordinator, and 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 our job is to be there with the families. You know, like uh, Patty, to to be there with them in mm. the moment. To be they, with them. Explain that, because people watching right now thinking, "Well, I have to go through this alone, right?" No. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. When when um, we are we're trained and 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 our heart, our passion, is is to see families being um, supported in this time. What do you do so for them? Hard. What do you do for them? Sometimes it, it it's really what the family needs at that moment. Sometimes they just need somebody to be quiet next to them. Um, I'm personally a Spanish speaking, so sometimes families just need a translator. Um, if we don't have one, so we'll try to get one. We'll try to advocate for them if it's needed, um, but help them, them to, through their process. And it's important for people to know if they donate or not. We're with them, with them. We're with them throughout the process. You know, we're not just about, uh, well, if you become a donor, then we're compassionate towards you. You just lost a loved one. That's a, that's a big deal. And being involved with that process of supporting families and honestly mm. i would say their darkest moment mm. i realized how precious the gift that i was about to receive was um there's people that probably have a cornea transplant or a tissue a tissue transplant um this it helps with so many things and we call it enhancing their lives but for some people you really just saving you pretty well you, you, they saved my life well, well listen, you got the cornea mm -hmm. when I got it in March of 2013, last year. New baby? The baby um, came this year, January 15th to 2014. Do you mind if we show a picture? No, there it not is. a problem, of course. Who's that baby? <laughs> that's, that's James Levi, and that's, that's me. That's James that's, Levi. That's his first bath. So, you know, I was very excited, and he obviously was very excited, too. You were able to see James Levi in a way that you would never have been yeah. able to see James Levi. Yeah, I don't, I don't need, you know, in the mornings when he wakes up and he hits my face, you know, it's, it's an amazing <laughs> feeling just to see him. You know, obviously I have to watch for my cornea. I always protect these from him. <laughs> but um, he, he's, a, he's a blessing, and it's amazing to be able to receive this gift and be able to see him better. It's, it's a blessing. Um, Pat, I want to ask you. You know you're doing extraordinary public service by being here. You did even more of a... It's the public service doesn't do justice to what you did and what your family did, what Zoe. That's just such an understatement. You gave life. Why are you here today? To spread the word about organ donation. If you can just reach one person and change their mind about how they feel about it, and they sign up to be an organ donor. Mm -hmm. they but you haven't stopped. You speak to doctors. You volunteer. You do all these things. Why? Why that? Isn't it enough that you no. did what you did with Zoe? No. That's not enough? It's definitely not enough. I'll repeat again. For those who are just tuning in to public broadcasting, when Zoe, you lost Zoe 13 months old. She was killed in a tragic accident. Yes. Her heart, her liver, and her kidney. And we're looking right there at a beautiful picture. Oh. Who is that? That was Baby Madison. And she was killed? In August 2011. And that's a friend's? Well, we didn't meet till after the fact, but... Did you help this? No, we didn't meet until maybe December 2011. But I had heard so much about their story. We had so many things in common. And we met, and that's another new family member, too. What do you mean another new family member? Like her grandmother, her father, her mother. I'm friends with everybody in the family now. Your family has expanded th through this experience? Definitely. Yep. Yep. How so? Everybody. Because this kid, family. Abel, who's 17 now, you sound like your family's with him. He's walking around with a part of Zoe in him. Yes. 17 now, 13 at the time. Family. That's. Yeah. But not blood. Not blood, but close enough might as well be. 
I love everybody at the Sharon Network. They're an extension of us. If I walk in the Sharon Network, I might not recognize the face, but it's always, hi, Patty. It's always mom. You're so he's mom. <laughs> everybody the, knows you. Everybody knows me. It, it, it's crazy to say this, but I'll say it anyway. In many ways, Zoe's always not here on this earth. But is she living in, is her spirit living in, in other people? Definitely. Definitely. You believe that? Without a doubt. And you're shaking your I head, too. I do, too, because Without I really doubt. sense that. I said, not having, being a donor or recipient, I really sense that walking into that building, that there is such a connectivity across everyone that there is this family feeling it's powerful i mean i've witnessed it and i shake my head it's really phenomenal to then to why are we so far behind you know why, we have your story to tell which is extraordinary the fact that we have you back i mean it's so terrific for us as producers in public broadcasting to see a success story like that is wonderful for us but obviously more importantly for you for you to tell your story for you to, there you know we were talking i was telling I was talking to our kids the other day about the difference between being a victim when something very mm -hmm. tragic happens and what you choose to do with it if you want to turn it around. What you did is the opposite of that. And you're such a, an inspiration for so many. But I asked myself, then why are there 5,000 people waiting today? You know, we're, we lose 18 people a day because there's not enough organs to transplant. Say that again? 18 people a day we lose because there's not enough organs to transplant. But the sharing network is, I don't want to turn it in commercial for you guys either, but you're doing all kinds of public awareness efforts. You have these PSAs yeah. on the air. You have these events. We're doing this. 18 it, people a day. 18 people a day. And I think, and stemming from that, it's what a lack of knowledge, like I encountered. But I you're did. the chairman of the board, and you said what at the beginning? That, how can I do this? I don't how know. Can I do that? That's right. I don't know. And I think that's very critical in this process. We, education is lacking. I think the, the younger generation needs to be brought up to speed of what this gift of life is. What do you mean the younger generation? I, the younger generation. I'm saying from, let's say, 40 to high school students to know what the gift of life can be given. Um, it's there. It's the opportunity is there. We need to just educate people. There's a tremendous amount of lack of knowledge or myths about what trans let's transfer. go back to the myths again okay because we do it every show myths. well yeah you know, this this one I, I, i'm a minister myself so uh there's a lot of things people connect a lot with faith they believe that their faith is against um organ donation and the fact is that every major religion every major religion i'm talking about um the catholic protestant uh, <clears throat> um uh, muslims you know, Jewish, they all agree that organ donation is the ultimate gift that anybody can actually give. All those religions. All the religions. And it's, you know. Someone it, says, oh, for my religious, my religion doesn't believe in this, you say? Well, a lot of people do say that, but, but in reality, you know, they, they just, they, they're probably not informed. They're probably not informed, you know, that, that a lot of, uh, um, a lot of religions ha either leave it up to the individual to make the decision or they actually say they support it openly, so. And in your situation, mm -hmm. was there a lot of support for you or did you do this alone in a lot of ways? No, I, I had a lot of support. Where'd it come from? Um, friends and family, but New Jersey Sharing Network. But how did you find them? They find you? How, uh, I, I was um, confused about that. I had that. a friend who received a kidney transplant, was speaking to him and he said he was gonna be doing this, the first 5K. And I was a year out from being, um, from when I had gotten sick. And I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted a goal. And so I set my sights on doing that first 5K. And um, I did it with my brother, just the two of us. And then the next year, Team Dorothea appeared. <laughs> and I have had at least 20 to 25 people. Who are they? Friends, year. family? Who are they? Friends and family. Committed to you? To my, to my, yes. It's committed to my cause, my, my journey. Is it a cause? It's a, it's, well, it's a, committed to the solution of what I was going through and then thank, thankful for what I've received. So here's my question. Someone says, well, you're done now. You're good. Why don't you just walk away? No. Why not? It's my, you got, you it's got my purpose. It's my purpose. I, I feel it's what? my purpose in life to spread the word that this mm -hmm. is an important thing to decide 
for yourself, but to, to give them as much information as I have to let them know why it's important. It's not enough that you have this kidney. No, my story, you... it's my story, I'm sorry to interrupt. My story has just evolved in such a way that it, it's, it's just gotten better. Yeah. And and the, and the support and the and the information that I mm. I keep I keep trying to educate myself more. I'm learning. My next is to learn more about tissue mm. um, and you know transplant. Let's like go back that. to the myths again because uh, one of the reasons I got particularly interested in this and I've I've told Joe this story, and uh, my wife told me it was okay to say that my wife donated her kidney, um, and beforehand we were concerned about and confused about all kinds of issues as to what the implications of that would be. And, you know, she wanted to get pregnant, could she get, what would be the implications of that, and re the recovery time, all sorts of issues. And we were so wrong about so many things, and because we had such terrific people, it was before we even knew about the sharing network, okay. but we had good folks at a particular hospital yep. uh -huh. that were really yep. helpful to us, and she did what she needed to do, and, and she's great now. But the point is, it's almost like you have to go through it or you have to hear someone who goes through it firsthand to realize, wait a minute, I've got a lot of bad information. Mm -hmm. So some of the myths out there about recovery time, or she's like, well, I have this one kidney, what happens now? And she functions quite well. You know, so there are a lot of myths like that, right? There are, there are, and like so going back to what we were talking about before is that the impactful part is people that have experienced it, gone through it, really can drive the message home, and I think that's what you're hearing today is that they've experienced it, they've gone through it, and that's the message we need to get out. There's also, you know, the fear of talking about death. I mean, that's people what, what, don't talk, talk about, about that part of it. Which one, the death part? Yeah. People don't want to talk about death. You know, when you're ill, they, they're just concerned about, you know, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, and that's it. But there's ways, there's opportunities. I'm going to die, and that's it. I'm going to die, and that's it. So you want me to talk about what am I going to do with my eyes? Yep. You want to talk about what when am I going to do with? When I'm dying. I'm dying, yep. and you want me to talk about those yep. things. Yep. Now here's the question. Are we advocating? Because you actually had, am I wrong on this, that you were involved and interested in this area before things happened with Zoe? Long before. So long before, long before anything happened with Zoe, this tragic accident at 13 months, <clears throat> you were into this. Question, you don't know this for sure. If you had not known as much as you had known, had cared about this issue to the degree you did, do you have any idea what you would have done? I probably still would have donated. You probably. <laughs> You still think you would have done it? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. While you're not dying and you don't know when it could happen because mm -hmm. tragic ac accidents yeah. and things happen all the time, isn't now the time to talk about yes. it? Yes. 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 Isn't now. now the time to talk about it? Go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. I tell my family all the time, everybody knows my wishes. Tissue, bone, whatever you can What do you donate, tell them to do? Make sure you know I want my organs donated. How do people do it? You go online. You go on. You go on the website. There it is, right there. New Jersey Sharing Network. You go on the website. What do you do? Click the box. Say you want to donate. Click donate life. And oh, that sounds complicated. You can also do it right? Facebook. It can't be that easy. Everything. It can't be that easy. It can't it be. Well, it, it, it is that easy. It is. And, and I think what's so important that Patty did is that you have to also talk to your family. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of times we encounter um, people that have their wishes known. They have checked the box. And at the moment, like you just said, tragedy happens at any moment. You know, it's just we just don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's important for the family to be aware. And it's, it, it makes such a, a difference for the family when they are in their darkest moment and the person made that decision. It's a, we always say it's one um, uh, least decision to make. The family. When, when somebody passed, unfortunately, there's so many decisions to make, where, where the how, the funeral home, and so All many that. things All they have to take care of. And if you know that that family member wanted to do this because oh, they were wow. compassionate, because they were giving, it, you see the faces of these families, just a relief to know that they're doing the right thing. Mm. And this is what the New Jersey Sharing Network is there to help their wishes co come through. And I mean, so they could continue living that legacy. It doesn't make it any easier that you have this tragic loss of Zoe at such an, at 13 months, but on some level, it's gotta give you a sense that you know she's done so much and you've done so much, right? This is the best thing to come out of it. No. This was the best thing to come out of it. Yep, no, I, I, I agree, you know, what Luis has, has shared with us. I mean, I come, I come home from the sharing network after spending a day, meetings or whatever, with the team there, and 
dinner table, we talk, I talk about it. Yeah. I talk about it. And, and my daughter... Final and my, seconds. Yes, and quickly, I mean, uh, my family checked the box. I mean, and they're check proud the to say. That's the message, right? Check the box. Check the box, folks. Just check the box. Thank you very much. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by TD Bank, Berkeley College, Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, NJM, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Choose New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Hi, I'm Peter Rooney. In 2006, I lost my father to renal disease. He was on the waiting list for a new kidney, but did not receive one in time. Unfortunately, so many like my father have lost their lives while waiting for a life-saving organ. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and by informing people about this important decision. Because you can make a difference and save a life.